don't know who your enemy is today. Maybe it's a coworker, a boss. Maybe it's a family member. It can be very complicated. But lead me. Then he says, make your way straight before me. That's my prayer in the detours of life. When life doesn't work out the way it should work out, this is a detour. God, get me back on the straight path that you might have for me. So a uh, road trip, correct? Uh, I start a road trip and I, first of all, I want to know how far it is. So I put it uh, in my, uh, you know, this is not even a phone anymore, correct? It's a mobile device. So I put it in a mobile device. And uh, personally, I use Google. Anyone else use Google Maps? Okay, now I have an Apple. I don't think Androids work. But for my maps, I don't trust Apple, okay? Now, my wife, whom I love dearly, okay, uh, she uses, God help her heart, Apple Maps. And uh, Apple Maps, they, they're forever wrong, correct? But she, man, she will die on the Apple Map. Uh, I don't know what we're going to call that one. And I'm Google. So we're always like, she goes, there's a better direction. I'm like, Google tells me this, correct? Sometimes she's right, I've got to say. And that's never a good thing in our house. And so uh, you, you're going to put it in there, correct? And you're going you're gonna to think of what, what, what are the essentials for a road trip? And so I was like, well, let me ask Google search engine what the essentials are for a road trip. And like top hit over here was what to pack for a road trip. And look at this, 89 essentials for a packing list, like serious. Do you have like a U-Haul trailer with you? Like, I mean, like, hey, baby, let's go on a summer road trip. Like, you got the U-Haul, correct? Like, what's in 89? You know, like, I know jumper cables, gallon of water, batteries. Like, I don't know what you're going to put in there, you know, snacks, you know, all this. 89, like, serious? And, like, I'm not that complicated. Like, I want a simple road trip. Anyone else want a simple road trip? And so a road trip for our summer is through Psalm 23. And Psalm 23 only has six scriptures, okay, one through six. And David, King David, uh, king in Israel during the Old Testament times, really composes the psalm to express his trust in God as a shepherd. And so we're really going to kind of unpack this whole shepherd's thought process, which is really kind of foreign to many of us living in this modern culture. And David in Psalm 23 seeks comfort uh, through God providing him these three specific things. They will kind of go over and over in the summer. Number one is protection. Everybody say protection. Protection, like God is my protector. And some of us might honestly struggle with that. Uh, the second thing is God is my provision. Everybody say provision. And then number third is guidance. Let's say guidance. Correct? So God is my protector. God is my provider. And then God is my guidance through this overly complicated culture, society, uh, that we live in, you know, if you're like me, high highs, low lows, you know, one day is a great day. The next day I'm like, what did I do wrong? Did I not take my vitamins or something? Like I feel terrible today. And so David wants to kind of direct us through these six verses that I would love for you to begin to even kind of study and read uh, by yourself. So we're going to read through Psalm 23. Come on, all locations, stand to your feet, okay? And uh, we're going to read this together as we stand to our feet. So you ready? Let's read together. Cumberland, I want to hear you real loud over there. So the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He... Fantastic. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup. Surely goodness and mercy and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Go ahead and grab a seat. You guys did a great job with that. And even as we're reading, let's be honest, some of us that are kind of new to church are like, what does anoint my head with oil mean? Like, are we going to get weird halfway through the summer? So hang on. Listen, there's a safe value here at Fusion. We're not going to do weird stuff, okay? Um, but, but we're going to really unpack uh, what does that look like? So again, what, what are these essentials, correct, uh, that we need in this uh, road trip that we're going on? 
uh, going back, again, I said, I, I'm going to pull out my, my mobile device and I'm going to put the, the destination in. So number one, and again, you can follow along in the Fusion app, write notes and email it to yourself, but it's a destination. Uh, the majority of us need destinations uh, in our road trips. A few of us will go, I don't need a destination. I just want a party. Correct? And uh, but 99% of us are going to go, we need a destination and we need to know how we're going to get there. In fact, we're going to do some uh, rest stops in the summer. We're going to have some guest speakers in. Uh, they're going to bring a whole different kind of variety to uh, our speaking lineup. And so even in going through the six verses, we'll take a rest stop and, uh, and have a guest speaker in. It's going to be fantastic because there needs to be a destination uh, with everything that we're doing in life. And too many of us are aimless. Too many of us are thrown about by our emotions or our feelings. We live in a culture where we just feel something and, and at the end of the day, trust me, your feeling wasn't right, you know, because look at the circumstances, look at the consequences that have resulted because of your feeling. And I love what it says in Proverbs, which is a, a book in the Old Testament, where it says, the heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. The heart of a man plans his way. I can't tell you how many times I've had a plan but God has established my steps. Let me be even more transparent. My plan often has been really dumb and God's had a better plan. How many of us can say yes to that, correct? Uh, other times my plan has been feelings, correct? God's like, that's a bad feeling. In fact, uh, when I was growing up in Southern Africa, I never wanted to move to the United States. That was not my plan. In fact, I told someone one time, you can give me a free ticket to America. I'm not going. Guess what God did? Gave me a free ticket to America and I showed up three times and eventually moved here full time in 2000. And then I said, I'm never going to marry an American girl. And guess what God made me do? Marry a beautiful, cute American girl, correct? And then I said, I'm always going to be a youth pastor. And then God said, guess what? At 26 years old, you're going to become a lead pastor. And so uh, if you want to make God laugh, tell him what you're not going to do. I'm serious. Just say, I'm not going to do it. And God's going to go, watch me. Watch me. Correct? Watch me in regards to that. I love what it says in Psalms 37. It says the following. It says, the Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights. I love that word. Delights in him. That's what we did in worship today. We delighted in God goes on to say, it says, though he, though I may stumble, let me just put up my hand. I, I've made my fair share of dumb mistakes. I've paid my stupid tax in life, correct? I've stumbled because I've been led by feeling and not led by God, led by emotion, not led by scripture. And says, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. That means I, a Christ follower, uh, God's gonna lift me up. God's gonna take my stupidity and kind of give me the right destination. And that's what we're talking about today. So what is my destination? I, I don't want to be, uh, what we titled last week is the village idiot. That's the guy with a bow and an arrow that runs around and shoots aimlessly. And if he hits a tree, he's all excited and he takes the, 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 uh, the goal and he puts it around. And, and then he says, hey, I hit the goal. I, I, I got the bull's eye. Well, he was aimless. He didn't have a plan. He didn't have a purpose. So maybe one of the prayers that you could have this summer is to go, God, I, I want to explore that destination that you might have for me. I don't want to be aimless. I want to have a destination. I want to have a direction. Uh, the next one is a plan to combat. So I just don't want a direction, but uh, a destination. But I think when we're on a road trip, we need to have a plan. And we need to have a plan to combat today what I want to call three particular things that are guaranteed to come up in the road trip journey that you might have. The first one is detours. How many of us have got stuck on a detour before, correct? Not fun. You're on the 95 South and they're like, we're gonna detour you on a one lane farm lane, baby, for miles to get back on the interstate. And we will, in our Christian journey, or maybe some of us are not Christ followers today, uh, encounter detours. 
Detour might be the marriage didn't work out the way you thought. Detour might be that you got sick and you didn't think that you would get sick. The detour might be that you thought you're, you'd be better financially than you're not. I mean, the list goes on and on that you run into these detours that you might have within your life. In fact, uh, in our area here, the Summers Point Maze Landing Road has a detour right now because there's a bridge that's out. And uh, in good fashion in our area, it's going to take over a year to rebuild this bridge. I'm so excited about that. And so they detour you uh, through like these residential neighborhoods. And uh, the, just the other day, I was taking my two little girls out for ice cream. And we were in an ice cream shop in a residential area. And this older lady stops and she comes up. She goes, so she goes, I'm so lost. She goes, I'm, I'm, I'm here in this Egg Harbor Township residential area and I'm trying to get over to an area. I said, well, ma'am, I said, where are you trying to get to? She goes, well, I'm trying to get over to Boscov's. I said, ma'am, I said, you're really far from Boscov's. She goes, I know, I got lost. I said, ma'am, I said, do you have a, a phone with direction? She goes, I don't even have a phone. I said, Jesus, I said, there's someone out there with no phone. I mean, I looked at it, I was like, is this, is, is this possible? Like, is this, am I, am I, is it a joke? Is this someone videotaping me right now? And, uh, and so she goes, no, I don't have anything. I said, oh, oh this is going to be great. So I said, oh, ma'am, you're just going to go all the way up, you know, uh, Ocean Heights, make a ride on English Creek, go until you get Black Horse Pike. And when you get Black Horse Pike, just turn and go south. And you're eventually going to get to Boscov's. And then I started praying in Jesus' name, help her not get lost again. But we're going to have detours, correct, in our life. And those detours might get us even further lost than what we perceived. And that's why we need to be in the Word of God. The Bible says that the Word is a lamp and a light. I don't know about you, but I need a lamp and a light to the detours that I might face within my life. In fact, Psalm 5, 8 tells me the following. It says, lead me, Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. That word righteousness, right standing before God. Because of my enemies. I don't know who your enemy is today. Maybe it's a coworker, a boss. Maybe it's a family member. It can be very complicated. But lead me. Then he says, make your way straight before me. That's my prayer in the detours of life. When life doesn't work out the way it should work out, this is a detour. God, get me back on the straight path that you might have for me. Now, the greatest writer in the New Testament of the Bible, so the Bible's broken up into Old Testament and New Testament. The New Testament, uh, which is mostly about Jesus, there's uh, a guy, his name's Paul, is the greatest writer of the New Testament. He writes a lot, but he's writing to a church in Corinth, and he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25, he says, a true athlete will be disciplined in every respect, and I think in regards to the detours that might come in your life, Correct. He says, practicing this athlete, uh, constant self-control in order to win a laurel wreath that quickly withers. This is the life that we're in. I was just speaking to people this morning that are sick, struggling with various things. And like their physical body is withering, but their spirit is strong. But Paul goes on to encourage us. He says, but in our race, come on, let's read it together, church. But we run our race to win a victor's crown that will last forever. So the detour that you might have uh, allow yourself to be disciplined to get back on track. And so maybe the question is, what's it gonna take for you to get back on track? What, what, what are the current detours that you might be navigating uh, right now that you need to invite God into? Maybe you haven't invited God into it and He really wants to be. So number one is a destination, but then we've got to combat the detours that we're gonna face. The second thing is we've got to combat the discouragements that are gonna come up. And again, I don't know about you, but man, some days it's a high, high, and the next day it's a low, low. And even more, there's roadblocks, like road closed, and I'm discouraged. Why? Because I had an expectation that it would be different. And yet my current reality looks more like this. How many of us would say, yeah, that looks more like my life right now, you know? Like I'm trying to do it right, but it's just roadblock after roadblock. And so discouragements can come in. Again, Psalm 23, why we're studying that is because David had a prolific way of encouraging himself. And David, even better, had this very unique ability to, yes, help people and people would help him and people would encourage him. But David, when he was ultimately discouraged, ultimately went, and yes, I know I said ultimately twice right there, uh, went to God to go, God, I need you to be my encourager. 
And that's why here at Fusion Church, we teach over and over. And for each of us sitting on our chairs today, you have our soaping, scripture, observation, application, and prayer. One of the easiest ways to encourage yourself is to join us daily at 6 a.m. in the morning on Zoom. And you might go, I can't wake up at 6. Well, then you can podcast it. You can download the podcast. And I love it. As soon as I get in my vehicle, uh, the morning podcast starts playing and I can listen to it. But But David was able to encourage himself daily in God. And I think that's kind of what sets growing, maturing Christ followers apart in regards to that. But again, going back to uh, the Apostle Paul speaking to the Corinthian church in 2 Corinthians, he says the following. He says, hey, everybody, (laughs) we are hard pressed. I know there's some of us today, you feel like that. Uh, We're hard pressed on every side. You ever been there? It's like, man, I just can't win. I can't win with my family. I can't win with my boss. I can't win physically. I can't win. The list goes on and on. We're hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but what does it say? But not in despair. Goes on to say, it says persecuted. Let's read together. But not abandoned, struck down. Let's read, but not destroyed. So we're gonna try that again. We're gonna go back to the beginning of that verse, okay? And I'm gonna read the first part. You read the second part. You good to go? Okay, Cumberland County, how are you doing over there? And then also those with our online fam. Okay, so we are hard pressed on every side and then you read. There we go, good job, better than the first service. I don't know if they hadn't had enough coffee. It took us a few times to get going with that, okay? So perplexed, yeah. Next one says persecuted, struck down, yeah. So I think some of us, we get stuck on the victimization side, correct? Like, I'm a victim. I was destroyed. But Paul goes, "Uh -uh, uh-uh, uh-uh, you're struck down, but you're not destroyed, correct? Some of us, this is my story. I was abandoned by my family to an extent uh, when my sister got sick. And and so uh, Paul says, persecuted, but not abandoned. I like to kind of have the victim mentality and get stuck in the abandoned. And the apostle Paul goes, "Uh uh-uh, no, 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 no. And so let me, let me just say, and this is a shameless plug for our connect groups that are going to be happening, uh, sign up, start this coming week. But this Tuesday, it, it, it uh, rolls out virtually, so you can sign up virtually for that at fusionchurch.cc slash connectgroups. And so one of the best ways that I deal with my abandonment issues or my persecuted issues or my daddy issues or my mommy issues is getting in a connect group. Because in a connect group, they can encourage me. And uh, again, let's keep on going with this whole trend in regards to discouragement and the Apostle Paul and these detours or discouragements that we might face. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8, he says, I, listen, we don't want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles that we experience in the province of Asia. Like he's going, hey, I need to be honest about the stuff that I'm experiencing in my life. He goes on to say, we were under great pressure. How many of us might feel that today? You're like, man, I feel the pressure far beyond our ability to endure. Oh, I've been there before, correct? So that we despaired of life itself. This is like suicidal tendencies. I love the bravery of Paul in his writings going, listen, I'm despairing of life itself. Like it's not good. And then he goes on to say, he says, indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. He goes, it wasn't just bad. It was bad beyond bad. Have you ever been there before? But he goes, but, whoo, man, he starts, right, come on. Your life can have a but, a period, a change point, an inflection. But this happened that we might not, here it is, this is gold. Rely, come on, read together. Rely on ourselves, but on God. One more time. Rely on ourselves, Come on, one more time. Rely on ourselves. Can I be honest? That's me over and over. Because I was abandoned, because I was rejected. Oh, I can do it all by myself. I can just work harder. How many of us out there, you just, you just work harder? Okay, just get more hours. How many of us, you're just gonna grit it, correct? Like, <gasps> gonna make it happen, correct? I mean, the list goes on and on. And, and, and I think God calls a time out and says, okay, Wilson, When are you gonna stop working hard enough? And again, some of us need to work harder and some of us need to slow down. So you gotta open your ears and say, God, how are you talking to me? But my issue is I tend to rely on myself and I need to rely on God. 
So maybe sometimes the pain and the discouragements and the detours I have, it's not like the devil out there. It's God going, hey, Brendan, I want to slow you down. Hey, Brendan, you got some junk in your trunk that you got to deal with. And I'm going to put you on a detour so that you can't go 95 miles an hour down the road. you got to go 25 miles an hour down the road. And I'm like tapping on the steering wheel 25 miles an hour. I'm staring around the car. I'm like, Jesus, can you just pull off the road? Because i got to go. Anyone else out there like me, correct? I mean, I'm like, serious, a detour? You know, like I'm strategy all the way. And, you know, I'm like, kids, you're not going to pee for five hours because that minivan that passed me on the road, I got to get past that minivan and we're not pulling out a rest stop because if this minivan beats me, then I am a loser. I got issues with God. Anybody else? Correct. Okay. And then some of you are like, oh, I'm just enjoying the drive. It's beautiful out there. So this is it. Now he goes, you got issues, Brandon. Then he goes on to the next screen. He says, who raises the dead? who raises the dead. You might be able to work more hours. You might be able to hustle another job, but you can't raise the dead. You might be able to lose the weight, but you can't raise the dead. You might be able to lower your cholesterol, but you can't raise the dead. You might have a fat bank balance, but you can't raise the dead. You might have a great this and a great that, but you can't raise the dead. And Paul says at the end of the day, the God I serve is the God that raises the dead. The God that I serve is the God that raised Jesus from the grave and set Him at the right hand of the throne of God. That's the God that I serve. And it says, He has delivered us. From such a deadly peril and He will, He will deliver us again. And then He says this, He says, on Him, on Him, not the things of this world, not the detours, not the discouragements, I have set my hope on Him. They mean He may continue to deliver us as you help us by your prayers. That's why at the end of every service, a prayer team is available, not for the special people, but for all of us to come and be prayed over if there's a struggle that we're facing within our lives. And he goes on then, he says, then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted to us in the answer of the prayers of many. What does that say? Again, the plug for connect groups. When we come together, when we get out of rows, we get in circles, when someone knows my name and someone knows my pain, then guess what? There are prayers that are working. And so here's the application in regards to discouragement. Is, uh, is there any current discouragement that you need to deal with today? Like what, what's an issue right now for myself? On Thursday, I just, I just got some, I got, I got bad news. I didn't like the email that I got. I didn't like what it said in regards to a situation. And, and it, just, it just discouraged me. And I went and talked to two friends and they, they tried their best to encourage me. But at the end of the day, I had to go to the Word of God. At the end of the day, I had to shut my face and listen to God. And I did that last night and I met with God in a powerful way last night and He encouraged me with an issue of discouragement that I had. And so we might have detours, we've got to combat them. We might have discouragements, we've got to combat them. And then here's one, uh, distractions, correct? We might have distractions. And uh, the the society today is distracted all the time. Uh, All of a sudden, notification pops up and we're distracted. I'm reading my Bible. I'm into my soaping. And then all of a sudden someone texts me and I think that it's important and they just thumbs up, correct? I'm like, serious, you know? And then I'm like, oh, let me just check one thing on drama book. And then, you know, 30 minutes later, I'm down the rabbit hole. I'm like, deeper, 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 let's go, correct? And so we live in a culture of distractions. So maybe this summer you need to quit drama book. Maybe this summer, You need to turn off the news because guess what? They're going to keep on developing drama out there on those news channels. Maybe this summer you got to draw a line in the sand with a friend. That's a distraction. They're a gossip. They're just a troublemaker. And you go, man, I, 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 I need to stop that and just say, God, what are you speaking to? But here's a rear view mirror, correct? Too many of us are distracted because we're driving with a rear view mirror that is larger than the front windshield. We're stuck in the past. We're stuck with our failures. We're stuck with the junk. It's an anchor that's holding us back. We've got to break that chain in Jesus' name. And I love what the prophet Isaiah says in the Old Testament. Again, uh, this guy was speaking over Israel and Judah. He had a word of God. And he said in Isaiah 43 verse 18, he said, Forget 
the former things. Come on, let's read together. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Forget the former things. Sings, do not dwell on the past. Come on, some of us got to look at our neighbor right now and say, do not dwell on the past. Come on, tell your other neighbor, do not get distracted. Come on, look at them. Uh-uh, uh-uh, you know, come on, let's be honest. You're like, you got the, you got the Fusion app open and you're like, woo, wonder what that baseball score looks like right now. I'm typing scripture, pastor, I promise you, I'm typing scripture, you know. I'm praying, I'm praying for those Teens, in Jesus' name, correct? Isaiah says, forget the former things. Do not dwell, dwell, sit on the past. Yes, the past happened. We've got to recognize it, but we can't live in the past. He says, now it springs up. I love this. I'm doing a new thing. Now it's spring, 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 spring. Something this summer is going to spring up in your life. It's going to be a miracle that's going to happen within your life. Am I ready for it? Am I prepared for it? He says, listen, uh, do I have the ability to perceive what's happening? He says, I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. You might go, There's, it's an impossibility. I'm telling you, I have seen God come through over and over and over and over. And when it is an absolute impossibility, that's when God steps in and says, the but God, I raised my son from the dead and I can set you free. I can deliver you. I can heal you. I can bring provision. I can bring protection and I can bring guidance within your life. So I'm making a way, a way, correct? And so he begins to say that because distractions, boy, they start small and they begin to grow within our lives. Uh, going back to the writer of Hebrews, it was a city and a group of people, the Hebrews, and there was a writer that was kind of saying, hey guys, uh, you, you've got yourselves all focused. Hebrews chapter 12, verse two, it says, fixing our eyes on Jesus, our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer, the perfecter, the finisher of our face. Okay, so another encouragement. Again, going back to 1 Corinthians, and I'm giving you a lot of scripture. That's why it's in the Fusion app. 1 Corinthians 9, 26. It says, for that reason, I don't just run for exercise or box like one throwing aimless. Here it is. Again, what's your destination? Is it aimless? Aimless punches. You're wasting yourself. You're tired. You're exhausted. Maybe some of us are exhausted because you're in the wrong fight, okay? And we need to stop. And when you say, God, I invite you into my life. So number one, what's your destination? Number two, are you combating the distractions? Are you combating the discouragements? Are you combating the detours? And then number three, in closing today, but who's invited on the road trip? Uh, Who's that going to journey with you, you know? And I just want to say, sometimes you want to do a road trip by yourself, uh, but road trips by yourselves are not always fun. I remember when we moved from Phoenix, Arizona to New Jersey 12 years ago, I did a 46 hour road trip from Phoenix to Jersey. And I was the destination guy. Like I was gonna get to Jersey, correct? And eventually it wasn't fun anymore. I was sick and tired of fast food. I was sick and tired of podcasts. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. I just wanna get there. And so we've got to invite people on our journey. I've known in my life that friends and family, church family, help with detours. They encourage me. They help with discouragement and they they help with distractions. So we termed this last week, but we asked the question, who knows your name and who knows your pain? And as I said that, I was like, man, that's something we're going to kind of chew on for a little bit. Who knows your name and who knows your pain? Not that we want to be stuck on the pain, but the pain is often something that we hide because of our pride. So I'll tell you all the great things that God is doing. I'll tell you all the things that are happening, but do I tell you all the junk and the pain, the abandonment, the insecurities that I'm struggling with? So who knows your name and who knows your pain? Again, that's why we want to get out of rows and into our summer connect groups. Get on a team. You might go, ah, I don't have time for a connect group, but I can serve in the parking lot or I can serve in our children or our students or our media. There's so many places to serve at our different locations. But when I serve, someone knows my name, someone knows my pain. Now, Friday, I got on the phone with one of my best friends and we just FaceTimed. And I said, man, I'm discouraged. I I got this information. I don't like what I got. 
and He encouraged me through it. He knew my pain and He knew my name. And one thing, can I just be transparent, that grieves me sometimes, is that we have lots of people at Fusion Church. And some people sometimes call in with a need, a pain. And so when someone calls in or emails in, we go to our database and we see if they're in there. Then are they on a team because that's going to be the best pastor for them or they've been in a connect group or maybe they've been baptized or so the list goes on and on, correct? And we go to our database and, and someone, uh, I'll pull up their name and I, and I don't find anything. And the, 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 the little graphic that it gives me is no records found. And can I tell you, as a pastor, as a shepherd, the most grieving point at times is where someone's going through some pain but no one knows their name. And so when it says no records found, I'm like, God, they're not, on a, they're not being cared for. No one knows their name and no one knows their pain. Because if it says, oh, they're in kids, then I lead them over to kids. If they're in students, you know, if they're serving as an adult, I'm talking about, correct? If they've been baptized, they're in a freedom group, a soul care group, a men's group, a financial group. The list goes on and on, a recovery group. Then I go, hey, that's the best person to, to help you in this Plan, this, this, this journey. But when it says no records found, no one knows their name and no one knows their pain. And that pains me. And so church, that's why we get out of rows. That's why we get in groups. That's why we jump on teams and serve. That's why we stay connected so that we're held accountable in that. And then in closing, it's this. We invite the Holy Spirit to journey with you. And I know for some of us as younger Christians, or maybe you're here today and you're exploring, you're like, ah, like I was cool with God, pastor. I was cool with Jesus, but this Holy Spirit, dude, like, eh, I don't know if I really want to include Him in my journey. And I want to say, yes, you do. You want to include Him. Why? Because He is the manifest presence of God on this earth. And so Jesus ascended and went to heaven, but God said, I'm gonna send you another comforter that's gonna come and He's gonna give you the revelation and the needs and the wisdom and the guidance and the provision and the protection that you need in this journey so that when you're sick physically or you're, uh, you've got a financial struggle or a relational struggle and you need guidance and you need wisdom and you need provision, the Holy Spirit's the one that brings it into your life. He might use people, He might use a church, He might use uh, something else, but He has that divine wisdom. And we see that in John chapter 14, verse 16, where it says, I will ask the fa Father and He will give you another advocate, correct? Someone that's gonna stand in the gap. Let's go back to the beginning, the destination, the plans. I mess up my plans sometimes. And so I need an advocate to stand in the gap. How many of us would say, yes, that is me for sure, correct? And then it says, and He will send you, this helper and he will be with you forever. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to abandon you. He's never going to forsake you. I love what it says in John chapter 14, verse 25. It says, all this I have spoken while still with you. This is Jesus speaking. But the advocate, here it is again, someone to advocate for you. The advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in the name of Jesus, will teach you all things. So when you are on a detour, the Holy Spirit's gonna teach you. When you are discouraged, the Holy Spirit's gonna teach you. When you are distracted, guess what? The Holy Spirit's gonna convict you of these things and remind you of everything I've said. And when I do that, then I am able to fulfill the road trip that God has called. Now, in the Fusion app, in closing, uh, in the app, in the message notes, there's 10 key Bible verses uh, that you can use for supplemental study if you want it this week, or you can also head to fusionchurch.cc slash spirit. So come on, let's stand to your feet and let's ask ourselves these closing application questions. Number one, what is the Holy Spirit, again, speaking to you? Maybe I notated something, you're like, whoa, that hit close to home. Well, then He wants to kind of Kind of unpack that with you this week. Number two, what's your best next step? Okay, maybe that's waiting for that Tuesday email or social to jump in a group. Maybe it's having someone pray with you up front. Maybe it's going to the welcome home desk at our different locations and saying, hey, I need someone to know my name and I need someone to journey with me and I'm gonna jump on a team today. And then lastly, would you begin to pray and go, ah, maybe it's my first time here today, but I'm gonna think about jumping in a group so someone would know my name 
and someone would know my pain. Let me pray for you, Father, right now. Lord, as we begin this road trip through Psalm 23, I pray that you would be the God that gives us guidance, the God that gives us wisdom, and the God that gives us provision. I pray that you would give us revelation and understanding of what you're doing in our hearts and lives. And I pray this and I ask this in Jesus Christ's name. And all God's people said, Amen.